This is it. The very last chance for any one of these teams to try to make it to Sunday and keep their dreams alive. They got the Axe of Champions up for grabs. The Lions share $4 million. And I think just as important for these competitors calling themselves the best in the world when it comes to Fortnite. That is absolutely correct. The standings, the minimal points required will probably be much higher than 91 because if you compare the top points from yesterday to today, it is so much more closer. That threshold is much, much tighter. This is by far a much more difficult qualifier round to get out of a first. Yuma, Jema, Moneymaker comes in. Looking sharp as ever here. Gets the first tag, but his teammate is also hurt. Swings around. Can he go ahead and put it all together here? This is, this is a big battle for both of these teams because this decides if they have even a chance to keep themselves alive and they immediately get a disengage from Jema and Yuma. Moneymaker's just hot on the heels, though. He may not know exactly where he's at, but by going this route, he knows now he has to be in that direction. He spots him out at the tail end on top of the roof. Shots gonna be fired. Jamon taking a lot of that damage. But I in there to finish the job. They keep it alive, Monster. What a well played elimination right there. Comes in, finishes the job nice and easy this time. The shoes on the other foot. They are here to change the narrative, change the story. And they have an actual chance. Well, we already know. You can be all the way at the back. One win can potentially take you to the top. Yep, and with some of these teams already have their ticket on that battle bus ready. We've seen some reckless play to try to defend their drop spot, but a nice shot from Anon and Sons to deal a load of damage on their opponents. All about how you capitalize on this opportunity now. And you can see the crouch coming out from Anon. He's trying to hide exactly which direction he's going to come from, but FKS doing the same exact thing, trying to peek through one of these windows. And he has a gold sharp tooth. He could definitely one pump either one of these players. I'm sorry to say it, but FKS and Adapter just really representing as far as their drop has been better. They have really, really out dropped Suns and Anon every single round that we've seen here for the most part. This is the first time those Suns and Anon have found a very good and promising loadout here at the temple. But the positions have switched. Usually it's Sun yeah. and Anon playing from the low ground, which hasn't really worked out for them. Now we have the side angle and a lot of damage onto Adapter. He's trying to follow it up with combat SMG, trying to get him to expend as many of those resources as possible to make the fight that much easier. A little peekaboo shot from Adapt. FKS trying to clean that one up as well, but they just get pushed right back into the same Ooh. box. Shields are going to get dropped. One's going to go down. Adapter trying to hang on his final lifeline, but Suns with another angle. They win the most important battle of their day so far. What an incredible win right there, and all of a sudden now, that could be the run. Dreams shattered. Hopes being made at the same time. Not too many contested fights actually go down over here towards Brutal Bastion, even though it is contested. A little bit of a north and a south split between the two teams, which kind of maybe explains why they might be lacking a little bit when it comes to Storm Surge versus other contested teams here in the game, but they don't know exactly where their opponents are at. Rolls has the loadout that he wants. He wants to go ahead and pick up that big pot. Side sets the sniper. Cheating and Pixie are so far away and they have that elevation so it's not going to be an easy find to take advantage of while phaser he found something tries to go for a quick couple of early shots snazy immediately builds up takes that elevation away from phaser king is a little bit too far away so if they're able to pounce rather quickly that'll be two separate 2v1s but it does look like potosai is going to go for a disengage momentarily which allows phaser to kind of stabilize, reclaim his position, and reunite with King. Very, very important set of engagements in front of King and Phaser here if they want to make it to top 25. Ping, Kyrie need to do the same here, and the Eclipse State is starting to get a little expensive. A lot of teams nearby. Meanwhile, Edgy falls there. Fight's happening here. All in the last game, Pink and Vico taking that heated streak here directly into the next game. Already in a battle. Already trying to turn online here. You know, feeling pretty good. It's up against Shalom. Shalom made an endgame there as well. 
That was a big, big turn of events for him. See Pink and Vico right now. Now that they more than likely punched their ticket to the finals, playing a little bit more loose, a little bit more reckless, trying to repeat the fragging ability that they had in that last game, going a different direction than some of the other games that we've seen so far. Third party coming in. Making NK Papa's that job that much harder as Vico continues to go ahead and push them in, take away a lot of their territory. Pink is on the other side, but he needs to be careful because he's running out of resources to work with. But it does look like it is going their way continuously. One false move and it can be all over for Shalom here. He has to hit this shot, but he's missing it. Vico finds his first and down goes MK Papa first. Shalom now solo, but there is a duo starting to fire in. That might be the saving grace here as they did not get the full finish with Shalom back against the wall here. Vico continuing to push in. He's heated up. It's looking good, but these are not his walls. Hurt now from the third party. Back down to the low ground. Vico and Pink back up. It's cost them so much. Heels, material, and everything in between. We know they're top 25. But in the but at the cost, the cost of Shalom's game potentially here now. The minimap is showing that the third party is getting fourth party, making sure everybody has an invitation to the celebration. And that allows Pink and Vico a little bit more flexibility to continue the 2v1 onslaught and they finish the fight. They send him back to the lobby and end the run for Shalom. Shalom and MK Papa were right on the third team spot. But if you just took away 10 points, it would be on the bubble, on the line inside the top 20. So we'll see if it can hold up now. They'll have to hold their breaths until the next game. If we saw a repeat of last game, it's going to be tough. No, it definitely is. Especially now that they have to sit and watch. Only place on the leaderboard they can go is down, but at least they've secured their spot thus far. Source taking a little bit of damage. Taking a few seconds to try to heal up here over towards Steamy Springs. You see Bully and Shadow in their lines of sight. Just Shadow, actually. So this kid give Bully a chance to try to alleviate some of the pressure or just continue the rotate as Skits and Sorif do go down to Duke and Edgy. Edgy got to be, or Duke got to be feeling himself after that huge 2v1 against his NA counterparts. And just got to ask if he has the reboot card because it's a chance to get Edgy back into the game as it does look like he's going towards the edge of the zone where you'd think some, or at least the least amount of players are at. Duke by far the play of the weekend. That clutch incredible coming out of game three, securing them uh, inside the top 10 so far. Now, the team that probably needs the crowd's energy the most. Epic Whale and Clicks are on 24th position. And we want to emphasize to get out of the lower bracket, you have to get to 25th position or better. They are just on that line. One mistake and it is over. You just have to figure out a way to dig deep, get that energy. River and Gazer. Going up against another duo here. Rapid, Q, and DX. Shots also coming in from around the map, making it that much harder to try to take this one in a convincing manner. But the peace control goes on over, but a great shot by Rapid to go ahead and get a knock onto one. Quickly gonna clean that one up for the Siphon. Getting that refresh on the maps as well. You can see he's Max. Q and DX ready to continue putting down the pressure. Advancing forward every chance that he gets, trying to cut him off. River's gonna be by himself. A little bit of a miracle is going to be needed, but he's quickly keeping them on the run, going up elevation. Definitely one box at a time. Trying to tear down the walls of his opponent, give himself some real estate to work with, trying to stabilize his position. And momentarily, he's going to do just that. And another shot being fired on the Rapid, so the bait and switch is going to come in, and they played that one to perfection to take down River. Let's go. Well played for Middle East right there. Meanwhile, Tahi has to clutch up for death. This is it. They're working together right now. They find Degueda there on the rotate. Very nicely set here for the rest of the game now. They can pick up these materials. They can pick up the extra finds here. Get right to the zone. Plenty of time to work with as well. This will put them well within the surge. Comfort for now. Saw Kaizen go down in the feed. Clement was also out. But they've positioned themselves on the leaderboard in 15th place. 
Got to be confident that it is going to hold, but only time will tell as Anand goes down to the deal. Suns as well. So another duo's run here this weekend comes to an end while another one is shining bright. Love to root for death. Young kid from the Bronx alongside Tahi, but he's jumping over to Okis, who's trying to put up the solo clutch here for a moment there. He had a bit more on the standings, but now pressured in by Kitos and PH in. They're working the pincer maneuver here. One wall and two, and Okis now runs, trying to stay up. The early med kit here, they don't want to risk anything, making sure that they put themselves in the most optimal position to win this fight here. You have to respect every pro player that has made it this far in the stage. The best of the best globally here gathered for the weekend's tournament. There is no easy set of eliminations, but Okus is going to fall here now to the hands of PHC. And just like that, the Brazilian boys gain another well played. Trying to continue where they left off yesterday and go up that leaderboard, FHD and Hero. They look like they got a little bit of a slower rotation compared to most in this game. Almost uncontested towards the north side of the map, and that's where they're putting their money on to see if it is going to go in this direction. But the only question I really have, Monster, is how much surge do they have? Because if you're going on the slow side, you're not going to have very many opportunities to pick that one up. And even though they have a good amount of wood, full brick, right now they're just trying to get as much metal as possible because they know how useful it is in that end game. Meanwhile, we get to watch this back one more time. Tahi and Death, how they managed to find their eliminations right off the rocket ramp to set up the angle. Tahi, who came back from an extended break, joins back up with Death in the final last chance qualifier, pushes his way through, and then secures himself. The ticket, the ride here to wonderful Copenhagen. And now this is his last chances, his last efforts at play here in game number five, where they have to. They absolutely have to come inside the top 10 if they want a shot. So does Clicks and Epic Whale. They just need to play just well enough just good enough, better than the upper half of the lobby. Yeah, that's basically two different sides of the coin. Death and Tahi need a VR if they're looking to qualify or a massive amount of eliminations. You said it yourself, Clicks and Epic will need to do just enough to go ahead and punch their own ticket there. Stacey and Potosai at this stage in the game, I feel like they did more than enough to find themselves confident to go ahead and play yet another day of Fortnite tomorrow and a chance to win a million dollars as a team. And each placing below that is no slouch either. There's a massive amount of money up for grabs. Four million dollars to be exact. Seven man is trying to put the team on his back here. By himself, you see he has the vault loot and he's in 27th place. Epic Mail, we have just found something there, but seven man has the tournament run on his back. Snazy not to the hands of Epic Mail, but save picked up here. Now starting to run out of heals. They don't have much time. They have to get to the zone now. It's all or nothing, and there it is. Luckily, they were super close. It, it ends up working out. But Clicks and Epic Whale are inside the storm. They're inside the Mega City, just coming out a bit late there. So danger lurking everywhere nearby. If Seven Man makes it to the finals and King makes it to the finals, we'll see that contestant again. Grand Finals is going to be so crazy the new teams are joining in. Yeah, the storylines are literally riding themselves right before our very eyes. You see Vortex and Belusi go ahead and capture Rift Island, and that is going to be a must for them. They are right now positioned in 46th place, so not only do they need that Rift Island, they need to continue strong in the rest of this game, pick up a huge VR for the placement points. That even feel like their job won't be done there. They need to sprinkle in a couple of those eliminations as well, but anything is possible. We've already seen it yesterday. Caught a glimpse of Peterbot there as well. Big strides for Peterbot and Bala in the last half here. And they keep up the pace. But first, Way, YKZ have to do a lot more. Let's see what Frosty's can do. Frosty's got lots of work with here, but the pressure is on as he is on that line. He is the protector of the 25th line, if you will. He's got Rauru just next door, Death and Tahi. All teams that would love to go ahead and find these eliminations. Have to have a little bit of that goal line defense. 
Not let anybody squeak past them. And that could be a different type of pressure itself, knowing you are in 25th place. Anything can happen. Peter Bot and Baila have shown that as well. To qualify to this stage, the different weeks of qualifiers and the grand finals, they fell short with different teammates. But they went ahead and remembered the recipe for success. When they were teammates, they got a first place finish in FNCS Championship. The following season, they got a sixth place finish as well. So they realized what works. And I feel like they're trying to put that to the test here. This is a duo that was highly regarded on NA to be an elite force, undoubtedly. Now they're joining forces here again today. I got to touch base with Peter Bot and he had a lot to say. His on-camera demeanor doesn't quite show it, but the kid's got a lot of heart and spirit. So far, he is holding that line as well in 21st. King and Phaser, man, they have a, a huge task in front of them. They need an end game. They need a big, big moment here. So like does Seven Man. Seven Man is by himself. That is his, also his biggest problem here is that if he makes it and Seven Man makes it, they will be contesting one another. That's the reason they're here today, a very difficult upper bracket. Yeah, it just really goes to show how much all of these players are tested, not only throughout the weekend, the day, and in this game. Decent amount of the lobby. Let's just say the bottom half of the leaderboard. Some of them are in a big situation with their backs up against the wall. Man. Cooper goes down to seven man. Can he clean up that elimination? That's the question we're going to be asking ourselves. And I feel like I've seen Pink and Vico position next to Bully and Shadow almost all game long, all day long as well. We're trying to aggress onto him instead of going this away. Is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. But he falls too far down. That leaves Bully by himself on the high ground. And the wild part about it is Shadow has that, like, all that potential to really finish the job. We've seen him come back with late tournament strides and key his way through teams. That is where he plays best. But unfortunately, he's caught out trying to go against the fired up Vico and Pink. They're just, you know, in the zone, in the stride right now. And it's truly showing. And they'll find themselves this elimination. This will surely secure the deal now. It's over. It's done. Bully has to put the rest of the tournament on for himself here. You know, they have to at least be proud that they went from being one of the teams placed last up into the 30 spots. Yeah. Can he push a little further solo? It's going to be a crazy task. It's going to have to dig deep to perform that. You can see a lot of the teams that were on top of Rift Island or around it, they get that far pull towards the south side of the map. Cooper and Miro actually do both go down. Seven Man's going to clean up both of them. Bully falls as well. Batman Booga trying to hold on to his position. And then we got Snazy and Podesai over on the other side. It does look like they're on the hunt. They have at least one player around him. It does look like he might be a solo. And I wonder if that's Seven Man who's already been heating up. Well, quickly answered. Seven Man is playing so well. Those are eight points. Those are eight points. He was at 26. That's going to jump him up. He was 190 damage below. He already found the knock. He finds up Miro afterwards and crushes them at the same time. Look at his loadout. He doesn't even need any variation of the shotgun either. He goes in for that mythic stinger over towards Relentless Retreat. I questioned it. I questioned it yesterday, and my answer is here today. You can see why he's doing such things, but he's still below the damage threshold, continuously falling. He needs to figure out what he's going to do, and right now he's just trying to pressure a team across the map. Hope some of those shots sneak through. But he has a couple players on the backside. Hen and Vasque, Bryce as well. And this could be his opportunity as he looks back to try to get that surge. Well, one thing's for certain, this is the best performance we've seen come out the Middle Eastern region as a whole at any in-person event. They have just continued to get better and better. And Seven Man is truly showing us why they are champions of their region. Although Cal Gamer is down right now, but he's got to do he's got to do it again. He needs more surge. Two eliminations was not enough. Next up might just be Bryson Chubbs, but first. He's got to pick his poison. He's got to move here now, and he's got to move soon. He's one of the last persons here on the backside of the zone. Yeah, it does look like he's going to attempt to out heal it, wait for those opportunities for these players to try to go ahead and continue moving towards the zone. That's going to be his best chance to try to strike. He's trying to contain the storm surge, but he's still 100 down, 133, continuously falling. A lot of his heals are going to be expended in this situation. But what choice does he have? 
He's a solo in a world of duos. Yeah, and that damage that shows just slowly slipping away, getting further and further, looking for any of that leftover loot. He knew that he had something here. There was stuff to spare. Has to pop the slurp juice. Take the double. I was gonna say the double movement potentially, but no. He needs the shotgun. He's gotta do something monumental now. Will it be a solo? Will it be a duo he lands on? Let's find out. He finds a team rotating here. It's Belusi and Moore. But then into the box, and he almost does it. It was so close. He finds Q and D, but Rapid was there to seal the deal, zip him up, and unfortunately, that's it. That's Rap. So what a performance. You have to be so proud you made it that far. Yeah, just outside of that bubble in 26 is where he went down. And he's doing it with an unorthodox playstyle, not really carrying a shotgun until that final mo moment. Oh, no. It. This Licks is everything. Epic will. 139 below, though. They realize the situation that they're in. Even though they might want to back off, they have no choice but to go forward. That's PH Zen and Keto's on the other side. And this is where they're just trying to back down. They're doing just enough. One foot in front of the other. But if they continue to wait for too long, Storm Surge will activate. And they don't have many heals between the two. This is so scary because PHN has been on fire, but he doesn't have shields. Clicks has to do it. He has to do it here and now. And he does. Puts up the numbers. Well played, but it's not enough. He's still five below. He's going to have to heal here and find a tag. Can he get him? No. Shot from above. It's Hen who plays upset. Pam's still here. If he doesn't find a tag, it's all over. Epic gets it in the nick of time and enough time to potentially save his duo oh my gosh but clicks is dropping everything he's saying hey you have to stay alive play for yourself do it here and now yep this is the final moments we've seen epic will clutch out before no heals. in the past but that's exactly it he doesn't have any heals to work with neither did clicks on his down body so it's all up from here but unfortunate He's just trying to go ahead and use those bounce pads. Oh Every gosh. tool he has in his tool belt to try to get there and maybe even try to sneak attack one of these teams that might know he's there. Perfect rotation coming out from Epic, not really getting tagged up. This is his chance. He's barely on that mine. He's barely on the threshold trying to stay alive. Stay alive a little bit longer and you can get the placement points. That is truly what he needs to do. He's in 27th. Once he breaks past 25th, every team that falls will be a difference maker. It's all or nothing right now. He is only 91 above, just barely, barely there. But the chance, the opportunity, the hope is still alive. So is Death, another solo who needs to stay up. One more team will be it. Phaser's already down. That means King is on his final leg too. King falls as well. And they are down and out. Epic Will is now on that absolute line here. Wow. He pulled zone as well. Oh my gosh. Talk about a blessing in disguise, a miracle even. That's going to allow him to let some of these teams go ahead, go over his box, under his box. And this could be the perfect 25th. moment to catch somebody off guard, but he has to be careful because a lot of these teams surrounding him are going to be full on duos. You can even see Batman, Booga, and Rapid there. There might be one player towards the bottom that he could try to take advantage of, but it doesn't look like he's going to peek in that direction. He's just biding his time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Two points already given to him. Two more points oh, now. No. Top 23, but the surge updates as teams start to fall here. He's the final line. He is the one below to his left, to his right. Players everywhere, but the zone is behind him. And now off he goes, 200 builds in front of him, showing you guys why he is a 6X FNCS champion. Can he clutch up? Surely he can. There's a player there. He sees the builds come out. It's fresh wood. Can he break it? No. Decides to go for it. 18 seconds now before the zone starts to close and move in. Players jumping everywhere. Zone's on his tail side. Crash pads in front of him. He takes one. Left exposed. He's nervous. Tensions are high here. Time is definitely ticking. Only a few seconds left before Storm no Surge activates. This is going to be the moment right here. It's all or nothing for Epic Well trying to stay alive. 293 below the threshold. He's trying to move forward. He sees a couple players in front nice. of him. The damage is there. He's trying to do just enough. Playing a game of peekaboo, but he's still below the damage threshold. One tag, but no! Byla finds him! But did he do enough? Did he get to top 20 or not is the question. It's going to be so very close. How many points did he earn? Back into the game, though. The line is there. Peterbot is firing his way up to the top, and he's still going! Finishing the job that Epic left off. A clean finish there on to Rapid. He's hoping. He's hoping and praying that every one of these teams are below him are getting eliminated by people who already have their spot secured, just like Peterbot and Bylaw. They're inside of that top 25. They're trying to push themselves even further.
further. And he's hoping that it's them who take down some of these players. Moneymaker, Fnayan are going to be right below Byla. That's one of the teams that needed a big game here on the day. High ground's going to be stolen away from TK and Quanti. Oh one gosh. of them's going to go down. The crash landing oh comes through, gosh. but Peterbot just dunks him out of the lobby. Peterbot turning online now, but he loses Byla in the process now by himself. Peterbot has definitely done enough to get to Sunday finals at this rate it has to be but Grohl's on the low ground here for Clownski has to put up the numbers this is incredible if he does enough he can actually push players out of their top 25 this is one of the few players that needs a little bit more but deals in front of Peter Bach there's still a few top teams in the running here yeah there's only just a couple of teams outside of that bubble that need these big points top seven every single player left is going to be solos peter bot falls he was just on the bubble as well noxie getting an elimination on the lushi final four players this is it these are the moments noxie falls 1v1 situation video versus Grolls. a player who already has a spot versus a player who needs a big win Grolls goes down video takes him out what a well-played fight it was, and Vadil and Savage get a win like we know they should. I'm going 